Hello and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. Today I'm doing another longer page. I'm doing a full double page spread plus an insert again for today, which is week 51 in my 2022 Project Life album. And I'm starting off with photos. These are photos of Christmas Day. So I say week 51, but it's really mostly Christmas Day on this whole entire spread. I'm kind of falling off of the week bandwagon at this point, uh, and I'll hop back on it for January 1st of 2023. Uh, so I have some photos set out here and a little candy wrapper that I don't think I ended up using that but I have a variety of things and I'm also looking for some extra photos that are missing so that's why you saw my keyboard there I'm just sending a few extra things to print and I am going to be using an insert so that's what this brown template is these templates I just marked out with marker on two pieces of cardstock so I found my missing photos. I knew I had some of the staircase. We take this photo every single, every single year. And uh, this year there were two that were good. They were just on Scott's camera roll instead of on mine. So I just had to go get those. And a couple more printed up while I, while I was w trimming up those. I just trim those up using my tiny trimmer. It's good to have one of those small guillotine trimmers. You can get them, uh, Tom Tonic makes one, there's a Tim Holtz one. The one that I have is from Close to My Heart and it's a Fiskars branded one. And uh, there's a really nice one that um, Creative Memories makes as well. So there's lots of options for those little trimmers. Now I have all of these photos that are from the same event and it's very repetitive. It's basically everybody got their photo taken on Santa's knee. Uh, this was on Boxing Day and it's a very important celebration for my family. And so I want to really scrapbook this. My first thought was that I might do a little traveler's notebook specific for this, but then I thought maybe I would do an insert and make these photos look as one. So basically, I want to be able to flip the inside page, so just flip the insert and have this open up in front of you. So I'm going to treat all of these cards so on the back side of the insert and then the uh, innermost part of the of the outer page will all be treated as one spread. And I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I do those, those things first. So I did go into my scrapbooking stash and found my Christmas supplies. I keep them in iris containers because I don't tend to scrapbook Christmas stuff outside of just December and a little bit into January. So I have all of these collections and what I'm looking for is the peppermint collection. I'm looking for something that's going to pick up on, see how those photos have a lot of darks. There's a lot of blacks and really dark browns and rich earthy colors. And so uh, I'm looking at the peppermint collection here from Crate Paper, which is an older uh, Christmas collection. Um, I understand a lot of people have this in their stash because it was, I don't know if they produced too much of it, but it was on sale everywhere for several years. And uh, so look in your stash because this is a beautiful collection. And I know that my sister bought it for me one year for Christmas. And uh, it, I, I knew it was nice, but it wasn't until I started using it that I realized just how versatile it is. It's a little bit more distressed than some of the more modern collections but I do really like it. My first thought was that I would use this green and red pattern paper but once I start doing this I'm going to realize that I actually like the green pattern on the back side a little bit better for this for this use. So basically I want the equivalent of a spread but it's just going to be in the center of my page instead of on one side or the other side and half of it is going to be on an insert. Now what I'd like to do is trim down each of these photos. They were already printed up to uh, exactly three by four, a little bit less so that they they fit in those three by four pockets but I want them a, a little bit smaller so I'm cutting a half an inch off of two sides of them or a quarter of an inch off all of the sides of them depending on how the photo is on the like how it is 
trimmed <laughs> and cropped. So uh, basically, instead of them being three by four, they're going to be two and a half by three and a half. And that's going to give me some room to be able to do some matting as well as put them on this green pattern paper. And because they're all going to be on the green pattern paper, it's going to make them look very obviously like it's all part of one story. So I'm just trimming it down so that I'm, you know, cutting off the less important details. I do want to keep some background detail uh, just because, you know, like Jen's tree was really beautifully decorated and it's nice to see the little Christmas things that are around her house and stuff. So trimming all of those down to basically the same size. This is where that Fisker's trimmer comes in so handy because it's just so easy to trim things down and keep your angles nice and 90 degrees while you're if you're using that trimmer. And so that looks fine, but I feel like there's there's a reason why I'm pulling out this other red cardstock. This is cherry cobbler cardstock from Stampin' Up. It's a nice, rich, dark green, dark green. It's a dark red. And see how it picks up on some of the reds that are in the in the photos already. It's just a darker as opposed to a bright red. It's a darker red. And uh, I think that it picks up on some of the the it, it complements nicely the wooden floor that you see as well as lots of the darker colors in the photos. And because these photos are so um, busy, there's a lot going on. You can see gifts and clothing and, and um, the coat closet in the back. Uh, uh, having this very thin line go around the outside edges of these photos just gives it a little bit of structure and, and containment for uh, the contents of each of those photos and it, it brings some order to what might look like a very chaotic bunch of photos because those lines are very predictable and they line up nice and evenly two three by fours equal to one four by six and so it's it's all very uh, predictable and lined up which is which is quite nice I'm just deciding here based on the story that I want to tell, which I'm, I'm actually not going to use any words to tell this story. It's just going to be the photos will tell the story themselves. I have one little little caption, a, a very small journaling card will be included here. But I want certain photos to go together because of the families that were involved. And some of these are cut into two because they're going into three by four pockets and some of them are staying as a four by six. So I'm just strategically arranging them. Now I have an extra photo here, that's Adam. So that's going to go with the photo of Jen because he's her husband. And so I will just finish matting this. I'm just leaving the thinnest little edge on each of these. And now this photo of Adam, I'm also going to mat, but I have a few more of these to mat first. And I know that this adds, it adds bulk. And when you're doing Project Life, sometimes bulkiness is important, but I just find that it makes enough of a difference in the look that it's worth the extra bulk. Also, I'm at the end of my album, so I can have a pretty good sense of whether I can afford the extra bulkiness it, when I'm doing this in December, as opposed to if I'm doing this in January or February with the whole year ahead of me. So here is the card that I'm going to do a interactive element with and conveniently this card falls on the right hand side of the page which means I can do one of these tent fold insert flip things that I don't know what I'm calling them but uh, maybe there's a name for this. I don't know what it is. If you have a, a standard name for this let me know so I can <laughs> call it the right thing. Uh, but I call it a tent fold lift the flap maybe. That's what I'm deciding to call it right now. Anyhow, I have just used a piece of scrap paper there. I cut it down to uh, three inches wide by, it has to be more than eight inches 
uh, long and then I score it at four inches and I do want the inside part to be just a smidgen longer than four inches because I find that with the uh, w with the scoring it takes up some of the length of that cardstock and so um, it, a card will float in that pocket if you don't make it a little tiny bit longer than four inches on one side. So I will uh, make this inside photo also matted in the same cherry cobbler red cardstock so that it coordinates with what's on the outside of the flap. And also to, I, I've run out of that, that patterned paper that I used, the green, it's a very subtle chevron. It looks, it reads like a solid from here, but it's a very subtle chevron. Uh, I've run out of that. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the designer strip, which includes a little bit of it in a scallop, in a scallop pattern. And I am putting that above and below the photo. My photo was just a little bit not long enough. So I rematted it onto longer red cardstock and that way it will span the whole width of this card and then I will cut it down there and there okay that's what I'm looking for that's the look that I wanted and uh yeah so now I just have to do my big title card here and I already know what I want the title to be. I knew as soon as I wanted to do these cards that I was going to call it Santa, We Know Him. And that is taken from the Elf movie where Elf, uh, where Buddy the Elf is uh, working at the department store and they say that Santa's coming and there's a big kerfuffle where, or a big commotion where Santa has a, is arriving and Buddy screams very enthusiastically, Santa! And then he says, I know him. Uh, so we had that moment when Santa entered the room, the girls both looked at each other, all looked at each other and said, we know him. <laughs> so uh, I thought it was pretty funny. So I have these letter stickers in my stash. They are chipboard letter stickers. Let me just find out the name of them for you. You know, I can't find the name of them. I can't find them in my stash right now. Even if I could tell you the name of them, it probably won't help you find them because they're so old that I don't think you can get them anymore. They are thickers and uh, basically any bold, Christmassy, glittery kind of letter sticker would have done. I just wanted it to be super, super bold. It And it's really nice that the stripe on this is a brown stripe because there's so much brown in these photos. I like that this kind of ties in with the darkness of the photos. And so the I know him part, because the Santa is so dark, I want to brighten up this spread a little bit. And so I'm de deciding that uh, the letter stickers for We Know Him can be what I use to brighten it up with. So I'm going to use these white letter stickers. I'm going to go on a little journey where I think about using different ones and then I'm going to come back around to using these ones. <laughs> so I'm going to leave all this in here. It's tempting to edit it because this video is so long with the uh, insert in it. But, you know, this is part of the process is trying things out and seeing if it works and seeing why it doesn't work. So these letter stickers, are, there's a few things about them. First of all, it's so big. The word no. I do want to emphasize the word no because that's kind of how he says it. He's like, I know him. Um but it's not going to leave me enough room to put we and him if I make the no be quite that big. So I put it back. Also, uh, those gold letter stickers are quite dark and I didn't feel like they would pair well with these white ones. So I'm just leaving it as it is. I know I'm pairing the dark Santa with the light letter stickers, but I think it works because it's on a different line. So that's going to fit quite nicely. I'm just going to use my thicker alignment tool here and any any thin ruler will do. The thinner the better for these rulers and of course if it has a line on it like the alignment tool does then that helps you to really line them up nicely. I'm just going to um, kind of shift these around a little bit to even them up. I didn't have them placed quite straight and uh, these because they're foam you can make them a little wonky so I make the I made the little W 
kind of go out to the side a little bit there and make them a little bit fun. So oh, I really love how this center part of this spread really kind of pops out as being part of all one story. Here's that flippity flap again. I'm just going to do a little bit of embellishing on it and also do some journaling. So the embellishing is going to be fairly minimal. I just want to cover up some of this space that is just blank pink and white pattern. And uh, I like that pink and white pattern because it actually brings some of the rest of the spread into this insert because there's plenty of pink on the other pages around it. This is really the only traditional green and red color scheme in my Christmas pages. So that's another thing that will just make this section stand out so much from what's all around it. My journaling here says our Boxing Day tradition is to get together for food and fun. Noni's tradition of giving out paper bag gifts has continued with Santa now giving the presents. Ho, ho, ho. And I'm just making it up as I go. So it takes me a little bit to figure out what I want to say there. And then I will go back and underline that. It helps my words feel like they belong on the page and it anchors them and sets them apart from the oh what fun over on the side. Then I'm just erasing the marker, the, the pencil lines from my hot off the press journaling template tool that I used to make those lines to begin with. And I really like how this looks. Yep. Yeah. I like it. I, it's so nice when things turn out the way that you want them to. <laughs> so many times it doesn't, so it's quite nice when it does. Now, between last time and this time, I did find my package of half-sized Design A inserts. I think this is called Design H. So I'm going to put these in there. And of course, it's only the part of that Christmassy part that's on the left that goes into the insert and the right hand side of that part of the spread actually sits on the background page like the main part of the layout. So that's what I'm doing now is I am uh, going to design the back side of that insert which is not part of the red and green uh, Boxing Day story and the other parts of this page that show when the insert is flipped this way. So I'm back to my regular scheme from the page before, my regular color scheme from the page before, which is these pinks and and mint greeny turquoisey colors. Love these. This is the Studio Calico December kit. I'm really loving using it. I have this card, which is not from that kit, but it's it kind of packs a wallop here. It has a similar color scheme, but just a little bit more vibrant. Well, maybe it's a lot more vibrant, but it picks up on some of the brighter colors that are in my actual photos. So I do want to uh, bring some more bright colors into this spread so it doesn't look all pastel -y. So I have that striped rainbow card from the paper person kit from maybe this month or the month before. And I'm just going to tone that one down because it's a little much. So I'm just going to uh, cut down a little blue journaling card that I will put in the center of that. I came across this one that says something about a chill in the air and I thought this would have been a really nice embellishment to put on that outdoor photo from the night before but I decided to just leave what I had there because I liked it good enough. And I'm just showing how this really adding this blue journaling piece in the middle of this card really does tone down that card and makes it just not quite so bright. I am going to outline it with a bolder marker. I'm using my Faber-Castell brush pen to do that, which leaves just a, a thicker line than any of my outlining pens do. And I'm going to mat this photo on that same cherry cobbler cardstock just because I have some left over. I think it looks really nice with that bold red that's already on that card. And this is a card that it's a postcard that I want to include in my project life, but I think I want to include it in like a in a way that you can see both sides of it. So I think I'll hang on to that and put it in the next spread. Now, when I pulled out all that Christmas paper, the 12 by 12 paper that I used for the insert, uh, I discovered all of these 
Christmas themed stickers that I thought some of them would work well with the Studio Calico kit color scheme that I already have going on. So I grabbed these sticker sets and I love this Noel. I, I, I was kind of looking for one that might say Christmas Day or something like that. I like the Happy Holidays. And I just thought that, oh, I really love this bear sticking up. I, I like the idea of him. It looks like he's almost popping into the into the pocket to say hello or something. And uh, I'm adding the word Noel. And I'm just going to add some outlining around the word just so that it has a bit more presence on the page. And it also ties it in more with the design of the bear because the bear is outlined like that. I'm just going to add my roller date stamp that says December 25th. And pretty much everything on this page is from December 25th, although once you flip the insert, it becomes December 26th, but that's fine. You can tell as you read the page. Now I really love these stars and I think that they're going to look great across the staircase here. We always have this dead space in these photos because we take them from the bottom of the stairs and the kids are always at the top and this no peeking cardstock or chipboard embellishment from that Pink Fresh Studios sticker set is really perfect because they're not allowed to peek until we take their picture like we go down and turn on the tree and get everything ready and then they come down after we've taken their picture. I'm just having a look at what other cards I might have here to add to a lift the flap. And because this lift the flap is landing on a left side of the page, I'm going to need to use one of those snap photo flips. And I already had this punch out from the last time I scrapbooked from the page before. So I decided to use it here. And I'm going to do something a little with my all of my scraps here. This is just optional, really didn't need to do this. But uh, here's another tip is that if you can't, if your piece of paper is too small to fit in a punch, just glue a longer piece to it, and then you can use it as a little handle. But basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it look like I've layered a big decorative label punch with a smaller decorative label punch. I'm basically, uh, I cut two extra ones in the, in the red and I'm going to cut them in half and I just cut the center part off so I don't have to deal with it, but you could just cut them in half and then you just layer them together so that they are basically providing a bit of an outline all the way around the edge of your shape. You can do that with any punch that is symmetrical. And I like the look that it looks, that it gives. It just adds a little bit of presence to that embellishment and makes it look a little bit less like it gets lost amongst the snowflakes on the green card. I added another sticker from those sticker sheets and these are just a combination of Crepe Paper and Pink Fresh Studio. And I, I feel like I'd like something horizontal to layer on top of that wreath sticker. And special delivery doesn't exactly um, make good sense, but it, I like how it looks there. So I decided to go with it anyways. And, you know, we got lots of special deliveries before Christmas, just not on Christmas Day. I'm putting joy and I'm just making it look a little bit like it's uh, rounded on the decorative label here. And my journaling here says... Christmas morning staircase photo required before seeing the Christmas tree. And I do like that the word joy is that same red and black buffalo print that's also in one of my daughter's pajamas. So that works nicely there. I had an extra bag that I didn't know what it went to, so I'll figure that out later. So now let's work on this three by four card. This one is gonna be a pretty simple one. I'm going to add this little craft sticker. It's a round label with a, it looks like a cross stitched snowflake pattern on it or a poinsettia pattern. 
and I just want something horizontal to layer with it. So that Mary was just a little bit oversized. I picked one of these little Allie Edwards word phrase stickers. It says, uh, let your heart be, be light. And now I'll layer this photo on this card so it covers up the main sentiment, but you can still see the most magical time. And that's just a picture of our coach with the, um, with the stockings on them. We couldn't hang up our stockings this year for technical reasons. So uh, I just put a sticker over the, the boring part of the couch that was just dark and yucky looking. I have a baking stamp set. It's called Baking by Paper Person and it came in the December kit. And I'm gonna stamp onto this craft piece of cardstock and then cut it out. And the one that I'm stamping is says, the secret is dot 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 butter always. And I'm just going to use my Stampin' Up! Crumb Cake ink and I'm stamping onto crumb cake paper too. I love the tone on tone look that that gives. It's one of my favorite color combinations for Stampin' Up! products is crumb cake ink on crumb cake paper. In fact, before I was all decked out with, right now I have like tons of, of uh, Stampin' Up! products. I have all their inks and many of their papers. Uh, but before I had all of the things, uh, I had crumb cake paper and crumb cake ink. It was my first investment in, uh, in Stampin' Up! products because I loved the look so much. My tiny attacher ran out of staples, so I got my tiny little staples that uh, YouTube viewer Tracy gave me ages and ages and ages ago. So thank you, Tracy, if you're still around. I'm just going to trim this down and hope that it doesn't float around too much in the pocket. I didn't want to have to bother with mounting it on anything. So uh, I just kind of took a bit of a risk and it turns out it looks fine in the pocket. So here's my journaling on this blue card with the rainbow background. It says, uh, on Christmas morning, we got up early, opened presents, and had pear and brie croissant witches. It was a low, it was a low key but fun morning. Then I made turkey dinner, which we ate at 7 p.m. And that's quite late for us, so I just wanted to make a note that we ate at that time this year because normally we have people over and there's a, you know, like you're kind of trying to get everything in you have to calculate backwards how many hours ahead of time you have to start and uh, we didn't have to do any of that this year because it was just us this was a very spur of the moment idea that just kind of took place as I made it uh, I just flipped that card around and noticed it said cozy and thought let's put the sweater here and the other sweater there and I just kept adding stickers until I felt like yeah that looks like a filler card to me And there we go. And so just to the problem here is that all of those sweaters and stickers that I added have a, a black detail on them that makes them stand out more than the word cozy does. So again, I took my Faber-Castell brush pit pen and that gives me a much bolder outline. So I'm, I'm boldly outlining these and, and then I'm going back with my regular Sharpie pen and I'm adding stitch marks around the outside and inside edges of these so that they look more quilted and actually cozy looking. I'll hold this up when I'm done because it does make a difference and it does tie in the letters in the word cozy with the stickers that are all around it. Whereas before like the stickers looked very obviously added to the, the card, whereas now it kind of looks all pulled together and integrated. Oh, I guess I didn't hold it. Oh, there you go. Ah, I like that. I'm doing some stitching on the top and bottom of this too, just to give it a bit of a finished look. And then with this one, uh, I I want to put this highlights card over to the side, but I don't want to cover up any of Annabelle, so I'm gonna I'm going to shift the whole photo over and uh, still have it be four by six, but just shift it over a little bit. So in order to do that, I'm going to use this other four by six card just to hold the space, and I'm going to layer this highlights card over the 
photo so that the whole thing is now four by six, even though I cut off some of the photo. And now my journaling here is going to be a uh, point form. So I, there's a place to put the month. I put December and location. I put home and my point form uh, little highlights are going to be the first one is Elvin and his shenanigans all month long. The second one is smart lights, make the tree any color we want. And the third one is the looks on their faces as they round the corner. And that is the photo that is right next to this card. So that's, I, I purposely made the last one be relevant to the photo beside it. And now this is a four by six photo that I don't really feel the need to do too much to, but it says sweater weather forever. And they're both kind of holding up cozy things, cozy and snuggly things. Uh, Sophie says snuggle up and, and I added a little hat there. Sophie's wearing a hat in that photo and Liv is holding up a sweater. So I thought that that worked well for the photo. And now, th now this is the uh, bottom card on the insert on the on the left side of the on the right side of the insert, and I got this mask for Christmas, which was a surprise because I didn't know that Scott even knew what this was, and he didn't even know what it was. He had he saw it and recognized it from the game that I play, which is Zelda Breath of the Wild, and uh, oh, this is not going to work. Don't yeah, this is bad. <laughs> I just wanted this Zelda cutout. I took it from the packaging of the little mask that he got me for Christmas and I just wanted it to be a little bit bigger. So I thought, well, let's mount it on something and it'll be bigger and cover up all those letters, but it looks awful. I really don't like it. So let's pull that off. It was worth a try, but it's not working. I'm just not going to be able to use that dark green card there. I wanted to use it. I like the color, but, uh, yeah, it's not gonna work. So I'm trying a few other things and then I find this card and that one will work. That one works great. So I'll start by taping these two together with a piece of washi tape because this is gonna hang over the edge of the other one. And I put my little cutout of the mask from the box right beside the photo of me holding the mask. I'm gonna use my hot off the press journaling template here to draw some lines. I'm gonna draw them right up to the edge until there's something there and then I'll make them all lined up with that second point. My journaling here says, Scott saw this mask on display at EB Games and recognized it from Zelda. He bought the display model for me without even knowing what it was. <laughs> It's gorgeous. It's so nice. It's a beautiful quality. And I don't think you can buy them anymore. One of the YouTubers I watch has it on the shelf behind him. And I'm always envious of it. I always look and think, oh, that looks so cool back there. Uh, and now I have one of my own. <laughs> Who thought? Like I would have never imagined. Scott doesn't pay attention to my game. So I, I was shocked that he even knew. <laughs> I just put the favorite sticker on the cat bed and that one is done and put the little penguin sticker next to Annabelle and then it also says cozy day she's wearing her PJs and, and I'll stick all of those right into the insert So now all that I have left to do is the far right side of this right side of the spread. So you can't see the overall thing, but I'm pulling each thing down before I do it. So I'm starting with this three by four photo of my sister's dog and her two boys behind. And uh, I want it to be clear that this is not like this wasn't taken at my house it's a photo that she sent me on Christmas day so I'm going to add this little label I just checked to make sure that my sharpie pen would work on it and it doesn't it's a, a slick surface so I took my zig twin mono twin yeah my zig mono twin which is a slick surface writer and it just says meanwhile in Ontario just to make it clear that that's a photo of Sarah's house 
And now I adore this silver foiled snowflake card. So I just stuck the be real on there and that's all I'm going to do with that one. And this puzzle piece insert is, it just says we just fit and I'm putting it right beside a photo of so of uh, Liv and Scott doing a, a jigsaw puzzle. And um, I just want to add a couple of stickers to it because it looks a little bit plain, especially relative to those really busy cards right beside it from the from the Christmas Boxing Day insert. So just to jazz it up a tiny little bit, I took these stars and the stars have the same color scheme that's already on this card with the oranges and pinks and reds. And then this photo, I just trimmed it down to an unusual size and printed it to fit on a four by six card. And then I trimmed it down and it turns out it's exactly half of a four by six card and see how it just kind of leaves those words there. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do here, but I just, it's too much of a coincidence that it perfectly fits here to not do something with this. So I don't know exactly up this year doesn't make any sense. So I have to do something here. But um, I think I was thinking like I could do like show up this year or um, I, I was thinking of different things that I could do. And then I'm eventually going to um, decide to just cover up the word up with an embellishment. There, this one. So I have two of these die cuts. I already used this one. I cut it in half and used it in two different places, but I have another one because the die cuts come in both the documenter kit and the traveler's notebook kits when you get it from Studio Calico. And I put that on a tiny bit crooked there, but I didn't, you don't really notice it. So it just says this year. And I outlined it. And I'm just going to write out charcuterie board and tapas are a holiday favorite around here. And I did have to look up how to spell charcuterie because I'm terrible at spelling. I used to be really great at spelling, but somehow along the way I lost that skill. It's fine. It's a fine skill to not be that good at because in this day and age, you don't have to be good at spelling. Don't beat yourself up if you're a bad speller. It doesn't matter. Eat, drink and be merry is the little sticker I put there. And I'm just trying to remember if I did anything else. I think I might be finished, but I am going to keep the part in where I put the, uh, the, the cards into the pockets just because with this insert, I'm not sure if the way that I was talking about it was really clear about how it's going to fit into the rest of the pages, right? So here's, I've been calling this section an insert, but see how half of it is actually not an insert. It's just on the back page of this layout and I think I'm going to zoom out pretty soon there you go and once I get these pages in or these these cards in I think that I'll have a, a moment where I flip through and you'll get to see just the impact that uh, having that insert flip over and have that little section about boxing day is really nice so there's my photo flip from Snap. And this page is from the week before. That's on my channel if you're looking for that one too. And now I like to put tabs on these uh, photo flips, especially the, the Snap photo flips, the plastic ones, because it's not always obvious that, there, that there's a flip to flap. <laughs> so... I'm putting one of these, it says saying no, and I don't want that to say saying no. So I'm covering it up with some little sayings from the Allie Edwards phrases. One says today is the day, and the other one says holiday magic. I'm just going to put it on the bottom of the flip the flap, and I always reinforce them with tiny attacher staples. And that way you can lift the flap and enjoy the other side of that. And then when you flip it over, you get to see the Santa we know him section. I'm just going to put the date on there so that it's clear that it's not Christmas day anymore because the other side did have the date on it. 
So it's Boxing Day, uh, December 26th. So we have, this is yes, uh, last week's spread or yesterday's spread. I scrapbooked it yesterday. And then I thought about using those stickers, but I really, I don't want to add anything to this. I feel like it is enough just as it is and uh, it doesn't need any decorations. So I still have room in my book for one more spread that I think I have enough photos for and uh, come back to my channel and check out that one if you wanna see how my project life ends for 2022. Meanwhile, thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. And uh, if you'd like to check out any more of my videos, click any of these links and I will see you next time. In the meantime, have a great scrappy week.